24-year-old Joey Pesavento grew up in the Chicago suburb of Wilmette, a town with great schools, low crime, and an average income of $200,000 a year. It's a far cry from the underserved and desperate place often associated with opiate addiction. Like thousands of other Americans, Joey's overdosed on heroin twice. But unlike so many of the others, he survived. I don't really remember anything because I was so strung out. Joey overdosed his second time three years ago. His head was back and he was kind of gurgling. And I tried to wake him up and I couldn't get him up. Marsha Pesavento found her son in the middle of the night on the same couch where the family sat for our conversation. Police, ambulance, fire, they, they came very, very fast, thank God. I couldn't watch. I don't even know what was going on, but I, I imagine they were administering Narcan and it wasn't working. It was, it was oxygen deprivation. He was on a ventilator for about four days. Joey spent seven months at a rehabilitation center, both inpatient and out. His brain damage makes talking tough. Spasms and a tick get in the way. What is the most common misunderstanding people like me have about people who've overdosed? It takes over a minute for him to vocalize a single sentence. <laughs> That we're worthless. It's easier to email than to talk. Joey typed most of his answers to my questions. My childhood was ideal. I had lots of friends, an incredibly supportive family, and a lot of extracurricular activities. School was easy for me, and I was very actively involved in sports starting at an early age. I'm a straight-A student and a, the, the best athlete in his group. He was, you know, big man on campus. I started smoking weed in seventh grade at 13. I started because looking back, I think that the pressure of being the golden boy, i.e. excelling at sports and academics, having such a flourishing social life, became too great, and I wanted a way to rebel a little bit. In eighth grade, I tried ecstasy for the first time. Then freshman year, Xanax. Then sophomore year, I severely dislocated my thumb in a hockey game, which required me having surgery that involved putting three pins in my hand, for which I was prescribed hydrocodone. I quickly became infatuated with opiates, and then senior year, I tried OxyContin. Joey was on a roller coaster of um, addiction using... But no one, including us, really knew what was going on inside of Joey's mind to take him to the place that he was taken with heroin. We knew he was using, but we also knew that he was trying to not use. He refused to go back into rehab. He was continuing to see a drug counselor weekly. We were drug testing him. Taking heroin is the worst, best feeling in the world. The initial rush is like a wave of euphoria that is indescribable. You feel warm, happy, and just like nothing can go wrong in the world. Then, as they say, for each action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is followed by a crash, which makes you feel depressed, anxious, and like you physically need more, hence the addiction part. Heroin is insidious. You will become addicted before you recognize that you're addicted. So this is just something that happens. I mean, it's, um, it's a result of... Mental illness. I, I think it's really important to, to talk about things that aren't wonderful so that people know that they exist. I think, I think there are a lot of people, especially in this community, that, um, that see addiction as a moral failing. We're good people. We're not abusive. Um, we haven't suffered abuse. I made a conscious decision to help Joey as much as I can. Therapies, traditional and alternative, plus medicine for tick disorders, combine to improve Joey's way of life. We see constant progress with Joey. He hasn't plateaued yet. We, we still have a road to travel, and none of us really knows 
how long um, that will be or how much time it'll take, but we're, we're in it for, um, for the long haul. Having a child who is in active addiction is so much worse than having a kid who has a brain injury. A brain injury is something that we can work with and a, having a goal that we can work toward that it, it's a legitimate process. It's, it's, you see, you can see the progress. And in active addiction, the opportunities for relapse are just omnipresent. They're, they're everywhere. Check out Joey's answer to my question, what brings you joy? Honestly, as cliche as this may sound, the little things in life, like Nala, my dog, and watching the Cubs and Blackhawks, and the seasons changing. I don't know, and I don't mean to sound pretentious, but I think that surviving what I did and being able to talk or write about it kind of says something. As much as we have uncertainty, we also, I think, all three of us have hope. Um, and that makes, it, that makes every day easier to deal with. Julie Peterson, Wilmette, Illinois.